We have one last level to go to, which are the problems. And the problems are what mostly affect the characters thematically. That's where theme intersects character, is down at the problem level. So we're going to look at four examples again. Um, actually, we have five, because we're going to look at a change in a steadfast character to show how that sort of changes the way the problem feels in the main character domain, if the main character is a change character or a steadfast character. But first, let's look at our objective story problem, the problem that affects all the characters. And in Jurassic Park, that problem is control, the attempt to control. control issues. They try to put up the fences, they try to take care of the, the genes, they do everything they can because they believe that they can control things. And in fact, it is the attempt to control that is at the heart of the problem of Jurassic Park for all the characters. That's why it's the objective story problem. Now let's look at a problem that's not story-wide. Let's look at a problem that a, a steadfast main character might have. For example, we talked about Clarice Starling. She's pivoting around the issue of confidence with Hannibal Lecter. He's trying to tell her that she has to think about things, think things through. And her personal problem, however, is that she can't let go of the crying lambs. Unending, according to the Dramatica chart, unending is the problem for Clarice Starling. Her personal problem as a steadfast character, and she never gets rid of it. When he asks her, are they still screaming, she can't say they aren't, because they clearly are. She hasn't been able to let go. Unending. That's the nature of her problem. If she changed as a main character to ending, she'd draw a conclusion to those concerns, and probably not be as good an FBI agent. But here we are at the end of the story, big celebration, graduation, she's cracked the case, Buffalo Bill's out there, she wasn't responsible for Hannibal Lecter and his escape, so that's not concerned, and yet the music's very somber. It's because she remains steadfast with her problem of unending when the objective story overall told us that she should have changed if she was to resolve her personal problem. She didn't. She stuck with unending. That was her drive as a steadfast character. But what about a character who does change? Let's take a look at Star Wars with Luke Skywalker. That's paid, played much more subtly because the storytelling doesn't focus on the main character's problem or drive, and the fact that he changes is held very minor. Here's a guy who has to test himself all the time to see if he's good enough. He wants to test himself by racing this, by joining that, by fighting the other thing, by learning the Jedi stuff. He's constantly trying to test himself to see if he's good enough. And finally, Obi-Wan, that's the obstacle character to Luke, the one who provides the alternative paradigm and says, grow, grow in this way. In this case, obstacle character's right also. But in this case, specifically, Luke follows the advice and he does change. He stops testing himself and learns to trust himself, trust in his own abilities. Let's see that moment at which he changes, unlike Clarice Starling, who didn't. Okay, it's a little bit of a cheat because Luke is supposed to trust himself and stop testing himself, and this character says, trust me. It would have been a better line if he said, Luke, trust yourself. That would have really made the point, uh, the point a little bit better. So you can see, even a great story like Star Wars, that doesn't always have to be perfect. Stories don't have to be perfect. They just have to make the audience connect with them. And sometimes, if it's easier for you, you can actually break structure as long as it's not a fatal flaw, because by breaking it, you can tell something in a wonderful way where if you didn't break it, you haven't got the muse. If the muse allows you to tell something wonderfully that's a little bit wanky with structure, but it's not a fatal flaw, then forget that part of the structure. Do it the wrong way, because it's much more important to involve your audience emotionally than to have a perfect structure that they don't care about, as long as it's not a fatal flaw. So here we saw that Luke changed. He changed with the simple thing of turning off the targeting computer. And now, no longer is he testing himself. 
He trusts himself, okay? Unlike Larry Starling, who didn't switch from unending to ending, Luke sw switched from testing himself to trusting himself, to being sure. We have two more, and that's it for tonight. They are the problems for the obstacle character. And in the case of Chinatown, the obstacle character's problem is her desire. And her desires, again, impact everyone as a problem. Okay, you can see that the problems everyone was dealing with were coming from her own desires. Her desire for her father, sexually, her desire to go uh, take care of her daughter, first to be away from the daughter, her desire for Jake here. It's her desires that cause problems for everyone. But it's not the objective story problem, because the objective story problem exists independently of the character and affects all of the characters. The obstacle character problem only affects the characters with whom she comes in contact. All of the characters suffer the objective story problem until it's resolved or not. But the obstacle character problem only pertains to the people the obstacle character comes in contact with. That's the difference between the two. Yet, it's her impact that's causing problems for everyone. It's the main character's problem causes problems just for the main character. Now let's take a look at our last example. Our last example is the subjective story problem. And in the verdict, it's all about avoidance. That between the two of them, they have a problem caused by avoidance. One avoids the other, then the other avoids the first. If they would ever stop avoiding each other, they'd have a relationship. And that is how you handle the subjective story problem. You make it a teeter-totter just like the objective story issue. You make sure that it's between the characters and that they revolve around it, not that it's just assigned to one character who is the one representing one side of the issue and the other one representing the other. They do this, one on one side of it, the other on the other side, and they keep flipping back and forth. That's what makes arguments so interesting is each one will ultimately adopt the other one's tactics or the other one's position regarding the issue, the thematic issue, and regarding the problem. The subjective story is this wraparound. It's not just, I'm on this side of it and you're on that side of it. It's like two fighters circling in a ring. That's all of the clips that illustrate how you can refine from the overall topic of internal and external state and process down to the specific problem through the concerns and the issues in each one of the four through lines. There's a lot more to say on this, but that's all we have time for in this particular class, part one of theme. Remember, next week in part two, we'll be exploring the thematic argument so that once you've determined what your story is about thematically, how can you lead your audience through an emotional argument to arrive at a way of looking at the topic that you want them to adopt by the end of the story? Emotionally, you want them to feel this way about that topic, that this is a better way or a worse way the best way or the worst way to approach looking at a particular issue, to respond to a particular issue. So until then, best of luck with all your writing endeavors. Thanks for joining me tonight on Dramatica Unplugged.